Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and here's 50 quick video editing tips in Adobe Premiere Pro. In the last episode, we learned all about different tricks for creating sequences and working with project media. And today we're jumping back into the timeline section to check out how to work with these clips and tracks and moving into more preferences and shortcuts as well. So let's pick back up in the audio and video tracks of the timeline and what some of these buttons do. Where you have this eyeball button, this is the toggle visibility or output. It'll just temporarily hide the visibility of a certain layer. You also have the same kind of idea with the mute button on the audio side. That'll just mute this track. Or if you wanted to just solo this track, that's the S button. That will make only this track play and make everything else muted. You have the same kind of idea if you hold shift and click the eyeball. It'll just toggle the visibility of all the tracks and you can kind of just turn some back on. Or just hold shift and click them, it'll turn them all back on. And although I won't go too into it in this video, you have all these different tools here. So like snapping on the timeline, when the magnet button is turned on, that means that clips will snap to the ends of each other, which can be very useful. But sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes I really might just want to be able to get real close one frame away, but not actually snap because I wanted there to be a cut to black for some reason. When you're playing video clips on the timeline, one really useful thing for video editors, especially editing for podcasts or interviews or YouTube, is when you press space to play, it'll play back normal. So you can see it's going five, six, seven normal seconds. If you press L on the keyboard, it'll start playing in double time, which can be really useful for reviewing video. You can still hear audio when this is happening. And if you press L again, it'll just consecutively get faster and faster. Sometimes it gets too fast. So if you hold shift and press it, it'll get a little bit faster but not so much faster, so it's a little bit more stepped and incremental. Alternatively, if you press J while you're playing, it'll play backwards. So that's how you play your footage backwards. K, we'll just pause it, and then you can just kind of switch between J, K, and L. You can, go, you can scrub backwards and forwards really fast or at whatever speed that you want. Now, if you're working with photo clips in your project panel, one thing that happens when you drag on the video clip is the photo will just be whatever default time it is. So in this case, it's five seconds. So if you're working with a lot of photos, let's say you're making a slideshow in Premiere, there's something you might do. You might not want each photo to last five seconds. So if you go to Premiere Pro Preferences and you have all these different categories, you can change your preferences for a lot of things. There's a lot of tips I can give you just right in here. But just in specific for this one, if you go to the Timeline tab, you can actually change that still image default duration from five seconds to whatever you want. So let's say you know you're gonna make a slideshow where every clip just stays on there for three seconds. You can set it here in the preferences so you don't have to change each clip in the timeline. And there's actually so many more things that you can do in this preferences menu. For example, like auto save. You can choose how often to auto save. You can tell Premiere how much memory it can use from, from your computer. Uh, you can change the appearance of things to be brighter or darker. And you could see the different preset labels. So you see these photos, they're like pink or magenta-ish. Um, that's because still photos by default are lavender, that's the color. And the video clips you can see are violet. So that's how we know it's a video clip versus a photo. But don't get too caught up in this tab, especially with trying to tweak everything. To be honest, for the most part, I use the defaults for everything. But there's just sometimes where it's nice to be able to go in there and have one or two preferences. Additionally, you can also go to Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts and you can see this whole keyboard pop up of all the different default shortcuts. So remember Q and W that I was telling you with the ripple delete, ripple trim left and ripple trim right. You can see what they are. Uh, if I hold shift, it'll show you all the different things that happen when you hold shift or command or Alt or Option. I also keep these for the most part at their default. It's just easiest for me to teach and learn that way. But you can go through here and you can see all these different things. Like earlier in this video, I was using V and C to switch between cut and select tools. These are really basic shortcuts that you should get familiar with, like Command Z, undo, you know, cut tool, accessing your cut tool and selection tool. And this will make your life as an editor a lot better and this will make you a faster editor. So some editors do like doing their own setup. So if that works for you, that's fine. But for me, I found that I just like it just the way it is. 
and I haven't really tweaked much. If you're coming from Final Cut, it does have a Final Cut layout. If you're coming from, or if you want to make your own, you can set, you can set it and then save it as your own. But now that I changed that default photo time, any new photos I drag into my project panel, Premiere will automatically set them at a three second duration. So now I could drag out a selection of however many photos I want and now they're all at three seconds and I didn't have to cut them. And I can highlight them all and work with them at the same time. Now another tip on adding transitions here is if I right click in between any two clips, I can apply default transitions, which is just a default cross dissolve at a default time. You can actually go to your preferences as well. And that's another thing you can, you can adjust. So the default duration for a transition is 30 frames and you can change that to be shorter or longer. In the example of creating a slideshow, these tools could be particularly useful. There's also another one in the media tab, default media scaling. So you see that these photos are sometimes really large or vertical photos. And there's a way if I just right click on a clip, for example, and I choose scale to frame size, that'll automatically scale this to fit the frame. So since it's a vertical photo, there's nothing underneath. This is what it looks like. And you can see the scale in the effect control panel is still at 100. So this essentially makes this the new 100% scale standard that fits it in. However, if you choose set to frame size, you'll see that now the scale is only 16.1 or whatever it ends up being for you. It's no longer at 100 because it still keeps the original size of the photo. If I click this icon, which is the reset parameter button, you can click this to reset any parameter back to its default. That's very useful. You'll see that this is what it looks like at 100. If I scale it down, this is what it looks like at whatever size. So ideally, I'd probably want to do like that. I wouldn't want to do it like that. But you can change in the Premiere Pro preferences that when you drag it in, it'll automatically set to size or scale to size if you wanted to account for that problem. Or you can also just right click a bunch of clips at once and scale them all to frame size at once. So that's another way you could do it without changing the preferences. Now, instead of adding a default transition one by one by right clicking, you can also highlight all the clips and press Command D and that'll add a, the default transition in between every single point. So here you can effectively create a slideshow with the, whatever the default length transition you want it is. And by default, it's a cross dissolve, but you can go to the effects panel and go to the video transitions and go to the dissolve. You could see that the cross dissolve has this little blue box around it. That means that that is the default transition. But if I wanted the default transition to be a dip to black, I just have to right click and set that as the selected default. So now if I did the same thing, highlight a bunch of clips, press command D. Now we have the default dip to black, which is going to happen. So you can change that by just right clicking and making it whatever you want to be the default transition. But usually cross dissolve is the go to. Now another really useful tip you notice as I was working in this is what's called the effect controls panel. You have all these different parameters and you can just click and slide. But if you ever highlight the program window, make sure you're working in the program monitor here and you highlight the motion tab in general and you have your selection tool active. We now get this bounding box and this anchor point that pops up on our photo and you can do scaling and adjusting in a much more easy and visual way and position it like this without having to slide the X and Y axes. In newer versions of Premiere, you also get really useful snapping features. So I can snap to the center point, I can snap to edges and I can even move this anchor point. Like what if I move the anchor point to this corner and then I can snap that corner to edges. If you're not sure if you have snapping or not, you can also go to view and you can show guides and you can make sure snap in program monitor is turned on if you do want that snap, just the same way we had that snap magnet in the timeline. So those tools can be useful and that's where to find them. Not only can that be useful just for the general motion, let's say you're working with certain effects like a corner pin effect and we're in the effects control panel you can find all these organized in folders or you can, another tip is just search things by their name and it'll automatically pop up. If I'm working with something like the corner pin, which I can drag effects directly onto a clip, 
or directly in the effect controls panel of that clip. And I can also stack effects and then click and rearrange them. The order of operation does matter and they'll get applied on top of each other. If I'm working with an effect like corner pin, I can also highlight that, make sure I have the program window active and highlighted. And instead of just adjusting like these eight different X and Y parameters, I can simply work in a much more visual way and I can just move things with the program monitor active like so. In the final part of this playlist, we're gonna learn more about working with effects, creating your own presets, and different speed and other adjustments that you can do on the clips in your timeline. So my name's Justin Odisho. You can check out all of these videos and more in the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.